A lot of people struggle to raise private money, but what if you were able to make one phone call, just one phone call, and raise $900,000 in private money in only 30 minutes? Well, that's exactly what my guest just did three weeks ago, and she's going to share with you in this episode exactly how it happened. Today, I'll be talking with Carly Menino, single mom and full-time real estate investor, and she's going to share exactly how she does it, what she says, and how private money completely transformed her real estate business. So if you've been racking your brain trying to figure out how to raise private money, you are not going to want to miss one second of this episode. Let's dive in. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Well, hello and welcome to another amazing episode. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, also the host of today's show. And I'm so excited to have a mover and shaker real estate investor right here in North Carolina. And let me tell you, my guest is making it happen. Now, she's originally from this little town up in Ohio by the name of Lisbon, if I'm saying it right. Anyway, she graduated up there from Kent State University. She's got her degrees. She's got the business management degree. She's also got a degree in computer science technology. So back in and after 2008, she decided to move along with her two sons to North Carolina, where she determined to no longer just sit at a desk. She wanted to start her own business as a real estate investor. So after investing in her education, and she's got some phenomenal education, she's a Ron LeGrand student, Larry Goins, Vena Cox Jones. Uh, she's even been to my live events as well. Uh, she's learned about all different facets of real estate investing and how to grow her business. Well, she continued her real estate investing education. She became a master student with Ron. Uh, she did mentoring with some fantastic brothers that both she and I know. And uh, I think she's going to share the story that actually her first real estate uh, training came from uh, yours truly. Anyway, that's where the story began. And with that, I'm so excited to have here on the show, my good friend, Carly Manino. Hello, Carly, and welcome to the show. Hey, Jay. How are you? I am doing fantastic, Carly, and I'm just so excited to share you uh, with uh, the folks that we've got here on the show and the podcast. My first question is, is what did your real estate investing business look like before you started using private money? For all I know, you didn't have a business before private money, but if you did, what was it like beforehand? Thank you, Jay, for having me. Um, I did not really have one. I was learning, I was studying, but I didn't get to actually have a business. I didn't have any way to start. I didn't have any money to start because I didn't know quite what I was doing. So I started working on getting my education and learning the process of getting real estate. And then you happened to show up at a meeting I was at talking about private money. And who doesn't want to hear about getting more money that you don't have? So it was a great way to start. <laughs> There you go. So, uh, as I recall, you learned about private money uh, at a uh, real estate investing group that I was speaking at in Raleigh. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That was back when it was TRIA, and you were the speaker of the main meeting that month. There you go. Well, let's make sure that um, everybody's on the same page here. What is your definition of private money? Private money is having a relationship with an individual, not a company, um, but with an individual where you have a conversation and they commit a certain amount of money to invest in and we secure that safely with a real estate piece of property and a note from the attorney. They receive that and they earn a good amount of interest and their, their investment is safe and protected. So in your world of private money, you're borrowing money from individuals, from human beings, right? 
Yes, 100%. So you're not talking about hard money, right? No. no, no. So what is, what is the difference between a private lender and a hard money lender? Well, from what I understand, because I've never used hard money, is uh, often it's a company, but they also like to use these ugly things called points, and nobody likes those. Um, and I deal with individuals, so I like to meet people, build a relationship with them, get to know them, explain what I'm doing, make sure they're comfortable, and we go from there, and we build a relationship, and we do multiple transactions, and they get to make lots of money. <laughs> so where do you find uh, these private lenders? Uh, well, just the, kind of the same way I found you. They started um, at the, now it's called the NC RIA, um, but I have gone and talked to people there. I do a lot of networking. If you ever see me in an event, I always tell my people when I get there, I'm going to go make some new friends today. And I get my business card and I go and I try to talk to as many people as I can, find out what they're doing and if I can help them and what if they can help me. So a lot of times I'll meet people and they'll find out. But I tell everybody, I tell, um, I get a lot of referrals because I tell all my friends and people know what I'm doing. And once I tell them, they tell other people and then they'll call me and say, hey, I know this person. Did you want to talk to them? And they give them my information and we start talking. So a lot of my um, business, luckily, um, in the real estate and in the private money has come from referrals. So your private money and your private lenders has come from as a result of uh, networking and uh, referrals, right? Right, because I didn't feel like I knew people that had money because, you know, you think all your friends don't have any money. But uh, then I went to your training and found out we could really start looking through and people have a lot more money than they think, especially when you have IRAs and, and different forms of uh, financial tools that they can use to create even more money for themselves. Right. So did you get private money lined up from your private lender or private lenders before doing your first deal? In other words, do you, do you recommend focusing on getting private money lined up first or where in the process of being a real estate investor, do you recommend um, a real estate investor that's particularly new getting private money lined up? When should they do that? I recommend getting the money first. Absolutely. Um, I happened to do it almost simultaneously on my first one, but my first one was very small. I only borrowed $12,000. Um, and it was someone I met at the RIA meeting and the house I bought was only $6,900. <laughs> and I ended up selling it for 60,000. Um, but it kind of rolled. They were very close within a week or two of each other. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Did you say you bought a house for $6,900 and you sold it and you sold it for how much? Sixty thousand. Sixty thousand dollars. Well, how much money did you have to put in that house? Two hundred. So are you saying your profit was sixty? Um well if you want me to back up a little bit, so I borrowed twelve thousand, I put sixty nine hundred to purchase the house, two hundred to repair it. So I kept the difference. That was about five thousand dollars. Um, I then sold the house. I got a six thousand dollar down payment, so that put me back at twelve. I received the monthly payments for six months, so that was another maybe four thousand dollars. I sold a partial on the note, got seventeen thousand to put in my pocket, paid off my private lender. And next summer, that note will come back to me, and I'll get all those payments for another fifteen years. So you really combined multiple strategies. On that deal, you used private money to buy it, yes. but then but then you sold it uh, with seller financing on terms. I did, and you took a note back, and then thirdly, you sold off a percentage or a partial of that note to put money in your pocket to the tune of seventeen thousand dollars. Yes, and then I'll start getting those payments at the end of the year, and that's my very first real estate deal ever. <laughs> that is amazing, Carly. That is amazing. So, so let me ask you this. Am I remembering correctly? I saw you at an event in, uh, within the past month mm -hmm. and you told me that you had raised, was it over $900,000 in private money? Yes, I did. With one All right. <laughs> All right. We want, we want to hear the story. I want to hear the story. Well, exactly how much did you raise? Nine hundred and how much? Nine hundred and how much money? Um, 
nine, I, I needed 800. So I figured if I needed 800, I might as well ask for 900. Wait a minute now. Are you saying you always get lined up more than you need? A hundred percent. So you needed a hundred thousand. Say what? <laughs> Whether you need it or not. Whether you need it or not. So you needed a 800,000 for the deal, but you actually raised 900,000. Yes, I did. I love it. All right, let's hear the story. How did you raise 900,000? How did you contact them? What was the connection? What did you say to them? Um, did you try to talk them into anything? Did you present an opportunity? Tell us the whole nine yards. Well, like I said, networking is very important to me. Um, so this came about a few months ago. I told my best friend in California that I was going to be looking for some money for some deals I was doing. And she had given me a gentleman's name in Arizona. Um, I just gave him a call. I said, I don't have anything right now, but I just want to talk to you, try to get to know you a little bit, uh, know what your process is, how you know, how I do it, how you do it, you know, figure that out. Um, and we left it at that. It was maybe a half hour conversation, just getting to know each other a little bit. Um, and then I got this great offer presented to me last month. A wholesaler had brought me a property. Um, unfortunately, his comps weren't quite right. But um, they were selling the property at 800000 and the ARV was 1.35, so the wholesaler said. Um, so I was looking for some private money. And um, I started going through my Rolodex, as Ron likes to say. I have about 10 or 11 private investors right now. And I said, well, I'm going to call him because I knew that he worked with a group of his friends that they invested. And I called him. And like you said, I never present a deal when I'm asking for money. So I asked him, you know, what he had going on and what he was doing. And I let him talk because people love to talk about themselves and let you know what they're doing. And I love to listen to it. So I like to hear what he was saying. It was very interesting. Um, he asked me what I was doing, and I told him I was doing some lease options and terms, and he was very interested in that. And I said, well, you know, I, I'm always looking for new investors if you want to do, you know, to try you out. You know, we could do a small amount, you know, 50000 or less if you just want to see how I do it, see how much money you get to make in the short term and get that back. Um, and right as we were getting ready to hang up, I said, well, you know, as you know, I always do the lease options. I do terms. Um, but I do have this one cash deal I'm working on, um, and I'm looking to raise about $900,000. And, you know, we talked for a little bit, and he said, um, you know, that's a little bit more than than our group usually does. We usually try to keep it under half a million. And I said, okay, I understand, no worries. And he was quiet for a minute, and he said, you know, let me call um, my friend. I was like, oh, sure, yeah, no worries, you know, it, let me know what they say. Um and we talked for a few more minutes. I said, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. And um, he texted me not a half an hour later and said, I got you 900. And I was wow. Like, oh, thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> that is fantastic. Well, Carly, you just said something in your story that's very, very important. And I really, really want to, uh, I really want to circle back around to this. You said your initial conversation with this uh, individual you told him in that first visit that you didn't have a deal right now, but you just wanted to get to know each other and see if you might possibly, you know, do business down the road. Did I hear that right? Yes. Well, I'll tell you what is so important about that part of your story is I learned the hard way years and years ago when I started out attracting private money that I should never um, on a first visit talk about private money and what it is that I'm offering in the private lending program and also talk about a deal because I found out that makes me sound desperate. Even if I'm not trying to sound desperate, it sounds like I'm asking them to fund that deal. or I'm going to lose that deal. Um, so my hat is off to you that you made that initial phone call just to establish that relationship. Thoughts on that? Well, this very intelligent man once told me not to ever introduce a deal and ask for money at the same time. So <laughs> thank you, Jay Connor. Uh, <laughs> I, took that, I took that to heart. <laughs> and uh, like I said, if you ever go to a networking event that I'm at, and I'm always at a lot of them, I'm always up talking to people. And I always like to talk and get to know people better and, and find out their situation and what's going on. And 
so it wasn't too hard because like I said a friend had referred me I called him and said hey my girlfriend gave me your number and he was like oh yeah I love her you know and we started talking and it's easy to build up a conversation when you have an introduction even if it's a cold introduction she just gave me his name she didn't call him or anything um, and we started talking and we went from there and it's, you know, if you're interested in people, um, they're going to be interested too. You, it can't be one sided. You definitely want to know what they're doing, what's going on with them and how you can help them. And that helps yourself. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned a moment ago that you've got 10 or 11 or so, uh, private lenders, uh, right now lined up. Um, tell us some more stories about how you found those private lenders, uh, how much money they've pledged. So, you know, uh, I can hear what kind of range of private money you've got from each one. But first, um, tell us about how you, how you met and started networking with these other people. Um, so I have about 10 now. I will say almost all of them have been through a networking event, through a RIA group of some sort. I'm in different RIA groups um, throughout the country. I actually... Uh, after I got my first couple deals, I flew to San Jose, California, because um, I think that the uh, investors out there, when I ask them for twenty or thirty thousand dollars, they don't think I can make any money with it. So I can ask them for a huge amount of money, and I could do multiple deals instead of the amount that it would cost them to do one deal. So I went out there, I went to a networking event, I established a relationship with a couple people there, and they in turn introduced me to other people out there. So I built that group of people. Um, a lot of them I'll start small just for their comfort level, um, under 50,000, just so they could see, because I can do that with a terms deal. I don't need very much money, if any. Um, but then I have people that are up to four and 500,000 and now I have up to 900,000. So they do run the gamut. Um, luckily with the way I do lease options, I don't need a whole lot unless there's just some repairs, which I do have two properties right now I'm working on to have some heating issues. So those are going to cost me a little bit of money to get set up, but otherwise it doesn't take too much and you can get it started, get a relationship, build that relationship um, and go up from there. So let me ask you this, uh, Carly, how did it feel when you were able to really break through and really finally realize that private money was the thing that was going to make so much difference in your business? What did it feel like when you got that first private lender that said, Hey, I've got X number of dollars. Yes. I want to do business with you. Yes. My first one, it was $12,000 and that was the world to me. Cause I didn't have $12,000 and I didn't really need $12,000. As you know, I only paid 6,900 for the house um, <clears throat> and 200 in repairs. And that was just some drywall and it was amazing. It felt great. Cause I was like, wow, this really works. Like, I could buy real estate. People will give me money to do this and, and they get to make money in return. And it's a win-win for everybody. And then we get to also help people move into homes that otherwise wouldn't qualify for bank loans. So we're, it's really a full circle of being able to help people. Everybody wins in the circle. Absolutely. Has there been any kind of a significant mistake that you've made so far in this world of private money that you would give as advice, don't do what I did and you don't do that anymore. Anything come to mind? Well, I have been blessed that I listen to everything you say and I do what you tell me to do. And thank God everything has gone smoothly. So I pray it continues to do so. <laughs> All right. So really no, no big mistakes, no, no big hurdles to, uh, to overcome. Um, well, I guess that sort of speaks to getting the right training up front, right? A hundred percent, because like you can see, I have all your programs here and I, I go step by step. I make sure the attorney does all the paperwork. I don't touch anything. I don't touch the money. No one gives me a dollar. It all goes to attorneys. Everything is done legally. So we just make sure everybody is covered. Everybody is safe and everybody makes money. That's awesome. When you first started uh, actually raising money, with that particular property in mind that you needed 800,000, how long did it take you to um, get the $900,000 um, pledged from the private lender? That took no time at all. We were in Orlando when I was talking to you about it. Um, I talked to Ron LeGrand about it. I talked to you about it. And we had just about gotten it close to getting under contract 
and I called this individual maybe three days later, maybe three days later. Um, and he called me back within a half an hour. So you got that $900,000 pledged literally within three days of actually um, looking for it, so to speak. Yeah. And the other two days I really didn't look for it. <laughs> so really you got it in one day. Actually you yeah. got it in 30, you got it in 30 minutes from the phone call. Right. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, Carly, you are such a testament and a, um, and you know, uh, I mean, just proof that um, by taking action, knowing what your private lending program is that, you know, you want to offer to individuals then um, it doesn't take, you know, long at all. Now, one thing that you uh, have mentioned a couple of times is how you use private money in conjunction with a lease option deal. Um, talk through that as to how that works. Uh, well, that is great. You know, that helps a lot of people, especially if you're just starting out in real estate, even if you're not, but it does help you a lot. If you are just starting out, you might not have a lot of money to get started. When you build up these uh, relationships and have these conversations with people. It's really helpful to start building up the money because maybe you need a $10,000 down payment or if you need some earnest money or there's repairs and you don't have that money. You build these relationships and raise this private money so when you are ready you can move very quickly. We like to close as quick as possible, a week, 14 days, um, <clears throat> and you can simply call your person, say here's the property, they wire it to the attorney, they get their their promissory note and everything is legal. They get all their documentation, everything that they need in order to go ahead and know that their money is protected. And we can go ahead and close quickly uh, and help the seller out who's usually having some kind of difficulty and we want to help them out. So we help them out of their situation and then we help the new buyer that won't qualify for a bank loan and get them help as well. So it really is helpful all around. That is fantastic. What's your favorite reasons for using private money? Well, originally it was putting money in my bank account because I needed some. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, well, let's, well, let's stop right there. How do you put money in your bank account by using private money? Um, well, after we do the closing, um, whatever the difference is over the cost of the closing has to be refunded to someone. And in this particular case, that someone is me. Um, and then I decide from there what to do with the money, if it needs repairs or if we need to make some payments. Sometimes we have uh, mortgage payments coming up and insurance and different things. Um, so that definitely covers that. And sometimes I just need money for myself. So, so, so what you just said is you're actually getting money from the purchase of the house at the time you purchase it. And did you take any of your own money to the closing table when you bought that property? No, no, never. <laughs> so you borrowed more than you needed to buy it and you brought home a check. Yes. A how can check. you go ahead? <laughs> a big check. <laughs> a big check. Well, how can you bring home money from the purchase? I mean, how can you borrow more money than you need to buy it? Isn't that like over leveraging the property? No, not at all. So a wise man, Jay Connor, told me I have to get paid three times when I buy a house. So always get paid when you buy a house, get paid when you sell a house, and then get paid in between. And so when I borrow the money, it's never over leveraged because we get the house a great deal. And we're borrowing a very small percentage compared to the total price of the house. So the, the seller or the lender is never at risk because we don't borrow a significant amount <clears throat> towards to, compared to the price of the house. So the reason you're able to bring home a big check when you buy is because you're borrowing not based on a percentage of the purchase price. You're borrowing basis, uh, based on the percentage of the after repaired value, right? Right. So that house that you bought for, what was it? 6,000 and some bucks. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and you borrowed 12,000. So you're bringing home like a $5,000 check or so less closing costs. But then did you, did I hear you say the after repaired value, you sold it with seller finance and the after repaired value was like $60,000, right? Yes. So your, your private lender that loaned you money of 12,000 is really very well secured very because nice. the value of that property that they loaned you money on 
was worth 60000 but because you bought it at such a deep discount, you're able to borrow more than you need to buy it, and therefore you bring them a big check every time, right? Exactly. I love it. I love it. Well, it sounds like your most favorite and effective way for raising private money is by networking, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, you're a testament to the fact that your networking ability is directly correlated to your net worth. Would you agree with that? I would definitely agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so, you know, in this market, Carly, it's uh, difficult for some real estate investors to find deals, um, particularly if they are relying on the multiple listing service. I mean, there's no inventory. There's nothing in the, I mean, you put a house in the multiple listing service to sell and, you know, it's gone just like that. Right. So that particular house that you bought for 6000 and some bucks that was worth $60,000, how did you find that deal? Well, this was a few years ago. This was shortly after my very first time coming to see you. So um, this one actually was on the MLS, believe it or not. I think this is the one and only house I've ever done on the MLS. And this was before the market got too hot. This was about four or five years ago. Um, they were asking more, but I'm a good negotiator. So we got them down to $6,900 on the negotiation. They were asking quite a bit more than that. Um, but I did work with a real estate agent and she helped me. Uh, she, I tried to explain her kind of what I was looking for and properties that have been on the MLS for a long time, over three, four or five months um, that hadn't been selling. And we negotiated. It took a couple of weeks to negotiate, but they, we did get them down to the price I was looking for. And uh, we got it closed right away. But normally that's the one and only house I've ever done on MLS. And I'm, I don't really look there for my deals. I, like I said, I get a lot of referrals. Um, I have a lot of wholesalers that bring me deals and we do some marketing as well. That's awesome. Well, Carly, I tell you what, I know that someone is listening that would love to be able to raise private money like you do and like you have. And so I want to give away a free gift right now. I'm so excited about this brand new private money guide that I just finished writing and I want to give it away for free. It's called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. And if you want to get on the fast track to private money, just like Carly has, go to www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. You can download it, get on the fast track to private money, and never miss out on a deal for not having the cash and the private money, just like Carly Menino. Get on over to Jay Conner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide and get your private money just like Carly has as well. Well, Carly, obviously you have proven that you know what you're doing and someone just might be interested in doing business with you since you've proven to know how to do it. So if we have someone that's listening and wants to reach out to you, Carly, and talk about being one of your private lenders, how do they get up with you, Carly? Um, well, there's several ways to get hold of me. Um, you can always get my email, uh, at Diamond Capital Assets. That's in my company, diamondcapitalassets at gmail.com. You can call me on my office number. We have that in, here in Raleigh, 919-964-0264. We're on Facebook. We do have a Facebook page under Diamond Capital Assets. Uh, we're also on TikTok. We are on Instagram. We are on oh, the other one. I can't remember Twitter. Thank you. <laughs> so, yes, we're around. So you can definitely find us. My company's name is Diamond Capital Assets because we're in the capital of North Carolina. So Diamond Capital Assets and reach out to us. We're always looking to get new investors because we've got a lot of deals going on. I've got a new set of properties, probably um, a set of 40 houses. So a little bit of private money would probably be helpful for that one. Wow. And as you said, you create win-win scenarios. So again, Carly's company, the name of it is Diamond Capital Assets, plural, diamond, like a diamond you wear, Diamond Capital Assets at gmail.com. Um, and so that's her Gmail address. Again, uh, Carly's phone number is 919-964-0264. 
919-964-0264. And we're going to have this information in the show notes as well. But Carly's phone number, she actually picks up the phone too, is 919-964-0264. And you can find her on her social media, uh, searching for Capital Diamond, or excuse me, Diamond Capital Assets, all the social media. Well, Carly, what is your final advice to a real estate investor looking to get private money for their deals? Just like we have to say, open your mouth, go talk to people. If you're at an event, stand up, talk to people. A lot of times they have the private lenders stand in the center of the room. Make sure you find out who those people are and go talk to them and just take an interest in other people and find out what they're doing and what's going on with them and let them know what you're doing. And that way they'll, you know, if you can either meet somebody that's doing this or they can refer you to somebody and hopefully you can help them as well. And it's a win for everyone. That's awesome. Carly, thank you so much for sharing your story, uh, your lessons, and your success. Thank you. It was nice. Thank you, Carly. <laughs> thank you, Carly. Well, there you have it, my friend. Another amazing episode and story of a person just like you that is attracting and raising hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in private money. And she's doing it by asking nobody for money. She's networking. She is uh, sharing her story and offering a fantastic private money opportunity. And you can do the same thing. I look forward to having you join us right here on the next episode. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business to the next level right now with private money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.